We might not be at the convention, but that will not stop the conversation. Yesterday, there was a protest in Ghana. Ghanaian government's last minute cancellation of African convention. A convention that was to hold yesterday, last minute, where prominent Africans were to speak. People like P2B, people like Professor Lumumba, Dr. Arikana, Julius Malema. It will tell you one thing. This will, this, this will tell you that the president is afraid. This is why we keep on talking about puppet leaders. He's afraid because he, everybody know what uh, President Ruto of Kenya faced. The last time they had Pan-African uh, Pan Institute launch in Kenya, I think that was last year. I think it will tell you one thing. It will tell you one thing that African leaders, these are the same thing. It is, it, they're always the same people. African leaders are controlled by Western leaders. These people don't want the betterment of Africa. I keep on saying this thing. Why the last minute cancellation? You see that P2B was already in Ghana. Dr. Arikana was already in Ghana. Professor Lumumba was already in Ghana. Last minute, the, 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 the stadium is already filled with people, with African youth who are ready to listen to this prominent man speak. I want you to watch the video and listen to what P2B said. P2B responded to Hidemsha. But Africa will rise. It will only take time. Let them keep on fighting their own people. It will backfire. And like the previous speakers have said, we might not be at the convention, but that will not stop the conversation. We only shifted venue. So the conversation continues. We in Ghana to start the conversation about Africa. Africa for too long has suffered. And everybody knows the reason why Africa has, been, has suffered. People can try to present it in different stages. The prof speaks about it every day. Africa has been going through what it's going through. Because of what I always say, that it is due to one problem, leadership. It is failed leadership over the years that brought Africa where it is. I want to start a conversation because of what Dr. Arikana has said, talking to the youth of Africa. No continent in the world today has the potential of Africa. Not one. We are the second largest in terms of population and size. But our potential is far greater than even number one. Because today, Africa is the only continent that has a population of 1.1 billion youth, energetic, talented, ready to live the world in different areas of the world. Africa is home to the biggest, highest amount of natural resources, from minerals to we have 65% today of the world all cultivated arable land. So imagine what we can do. We can feed the world. We can do everything. But ironically, because of what I started with, failed leadership over the years, Africa is also home to the highest number of poor people. Out of the 700 million people in extreme poverty today, 431 million live in Africa. 
over 30% of our population. If you go to multidimensional poverty, out of 1.1 billion, over 60% is in Africa. With Congo and Nigeria leading. Today, in the surface of the world, Congo has the highest amount of natural, call it minerals, over 24 trillion. Nigeria has a similar situation. You can extrapolate Congo situation to all over Africa, where they have everything, but they are producing poverty. It cannot continue with our youth. With the energy they have, they can lead the world in technology, in health, in entertainment, in everything. All they want is leadership, purposeful leadership. Africa has what is, look at its wealth, resources, shamelessly stolen and put in private pockets. It cannot continue. So we're just here to continue conversations. It's not about any country, anything, but talking to the youth of Africa to know that the, they can change the world. They can change the way things are in Africa. Africa should not be a continent where people come to beg or plead for aid, we should be contributing to aid some other people with the resources we have. And that's all Africa should be. Their own Africa should be. That's all the conversation is all about. It's about the future of Africa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Mr. Peter Obi. And I dare say that the peace in court that is enjoyed in Nigeria today Negative or positive, he's responsible for it because he has refused the violent way and it's very good to say it in a place like Ghana. And some of us <coughs> took to the streets. We were willing to bring Nigeria to our knees so that we can rise up again. But he seems to have an ideology and in the little time I spent with him, I could understand that America and Europe are all built on genocide. They just wipe out the people and took. So Africa is shaping a completely new definition and dimension. Nigeria sits 600 languages. That is it. I don't know even how to put it. But to manage that diversity, and it's something we will do and we can do, to share something that has never existed in the continent of the world. This is what has been given to us to do. And so I want to thank you, sir, for responding to what you said, because truly it's only leadership that can do that, and you're speaking to the people who would take it. Mr. Obi on a flyer, I will spend the last penny to be here. I stand here as the General Secretary of the over 12.5 million Ghanaian students of this country. To my knowledge, almost all student leaders in this country were invited to this convention. Why? They know this is a convention that will ignite their voices of Africa. They know this is a convention that we would have to listen to the other increments of other countries. I got here and I'm told that powers from above have stopped their program. I'm sad.